Hi, um, thanks so much for joining the session on how to apply data science and machine learning to real estate. Uh, we are doing a live stream, so if you do have any questions, please put them in the session chat and we'll get to them and take a couple of questions, hopefully, at the end of this presentation. Um, so, first of all, uh, thanks for joining me. My name is Nelson. I'm the CEO of Property Quants. By way of background, I did a PhD in Decision Sciences, CFA, and undergraduate in Mathematics, Statistics, and Economics at Columbia. In terms of career, I started out in quantitative investing. So I was in a hedge fund out in New York, worked in a sovereign wealth fund in Singapore, doing asset uh, allocation, tactically across different asset classes, and then was in high frequency trading. So always building these, you know, really data-driven automated investment models. Then I was also investing in real estate in several different places and noticed the opportunity to bring these methods across into the real estate industry and started this company, Public Quants, about two and a half years ago to try to realize this goal. At the same time, uh, I am currently also an adjunct faculty instructor at the Singapore Management University, where we do uh, run some courses on data science for real estate and data science broadly. Now, moving on with what we wanna talk about today, we wanna to talk about how to apply data science to real estate. And first we wanna talk about why we think this is an important topic to discuss. Now, if we look at this 2018 KPMG PropTech survey, um, and it's a really good read, actually, if you guys haven't seen it, do, do try to look this up online. In you know, some of the initial questions, they asked participants which technologies they thought would have the biggest impact on the real estate industry in the long term. And now almost half, 49% of participants picked AI, big data, and data analytics as these technologies that they thought would have the largest impact on the real estate industry. Now, people identify that that's really important, but what's actually happening? we see, and, and other people note this too, that real estate professionals are actually facing a great deal of challenge in figuring out how to actually utilize or, or use data. You know, you can read this article uh, printed in the NAIOP about, you know, commercial real estate and the big data deluge and it's saying that, you know, one of the biggest challenges is actually figuring out how to turn all of this data that's coming from a variety of sources to actually guide decision making you know, sort of confirming this as well, in the 2019 KPMG PropTech survey, uh, they were able to ascertain that of all the participants from the real estate industry, you know, still 80% of firms did not have most or all of their decision-making led by data, right? So rather, you know, a much more discretionary, you know, approach without looking at the data, right? And there's also a little bit of a skills gap, you know, currently um, in, in the real estate industry and in real estate companies. One piece of evidence for this is in the same survey, they were asking, okay, there are a lot of people leading these real estate uh, or digital uh, transformation in real estate companies. What is their skill set or what's their background? And only 5% of people said that they had a background or, you know, in data analytics. Right? And that's the closest that we could find uh, to data science. We, we experienced this you know, firsthand on the ground as well. Property quants um, was participating in the Collier's Techstars PropTech Accelerator back in 2019 at the end of the year. And you know what we saw was you have kind of at the senior management level, people look around and they see what's going on in other industries and they say, well, you know, look what's being achieved by taking more data-driven, you know, AI, machine learning, data-driven uh, data science approaches to, to that industry. And they say, well, if, if we could do that in our sort of real estate company, we'd be doing so much better. But then on the ground, as, as we chatted with all of these uh, people, you know, researchers, uh, brokers, various employees, so sort of at the, at the ground level, we tell people, okay, you know, as property quants, what we're trying to do is apply data science to real estate. And the typical response we get is, oh, what is that actually, right? What does that actually mean? Um, how can I actually use it, right? So there's a lot of uh, a, a gap or, or a lack of knowledge about how to actually use data science for real estate. And, and that's what we want to talk about today, right? So in this, uh, in this session, what we'd like to talk about is um, a number of ways in which you can concretely apply uh, data science to real estate. We'll talk about some of the tangible benefits by doing so, and also some of the interesting business opportunities that can be you know, uh, uh, built on, exploited, or, or come up based on using these methods. And then we'll wrap up by talking about where you might learn these techniques, um, you know, to upskill your firm or for yourself, 
or where you can learn more so you can implement your own um, sort of data science transformation or data strategy at your company. And so let's begin. The first application uh, that we'd like to talk about is property price uh, indexation. So, you know, we can contrast this sort of to the stock market, right? So if you think about the stock market, you see identical, identical assets traded really frequently. So think about what's going on all day. You have Google shares changing hands many, many times, right? In, in a day, many, many times in a minute, even, right? And then you have like Amazon shares also trading. And so it's actually pretty easy in the stock market to get a sense about where the overall market is by combining this recorded transaction information to produce an overall index of the market or of a particular sector, say the tech sector's performance. But this isn't quite the same as what we see in the real estate industry. Now in real estate, every asset is different and each particular asset only changes hands at best once every couple of years. So given that reality, how can we use a real estate transaction data set to understand where the market has been? And that's, that is the challenge that we're trying to overcome when we talk about the methods for property price indexation. There are actually a couple of different uh, techniques for this, right? A couple of different statistical methods that will allow you to control for these uh, quality differences and produce an understanding of historical market performance even down to a really, really granular level. So some of these methods are, you know, hedonic regression, repeat sales, and so on. Now, you know, this allows you to harness truly a really large or a big data set, more transactions um, than, you know, a human being could actually think of to then build up an understanding about where the market is. In the chart on the right, we are showing actually, um, you know, a performance uh, based on property price indexation at a really granular project level. And on the previous page, you know, what we were showing there was property price indexes built using 2 million rows of data for London residential markets and were able to identify, you know, some differences in the overall trend versus say certain granular sub markets. And so that's what uh, property price indexation techniques get you. This will allow you to understand historical market performance using a very large data set, and even zoom in and understand really granular sub market level performance as well. Property price indexation is also in and of itself a business opportunity. Companies like MSCI, CEIC, and so on, and then many others sell access to these property price indexes. And then these are used by investors for benchmarking of portfolios, um, you know, fund managers, things like that. Maybe even identifying markets that you might be interested to allocate to. Indexation will allow you to compare the performance of different markets. Um, you know, by geographies, asset classes, and so on, and potentially find opportunities. Uh, governments are also interested in property price indexes um, because they represent, or real estate represents, a really significant portion of individual wealth and assets. You know, this also helps governments understand inflation and monitor systemic risk. And so for all these reasons, people are actually quite willing to pay for property price index data. So that's one, you know, sort of key example. Another example or use case of data science real estate is automated valuation models. So just as an example, you know, this is one of our own um, uh, proprietary automated valuation models for Singapore. They all kind of have a similar idea. You have a particular property in mind um, and then given, you know, certain information about the property, the data science model at the back is able to uh, predict a fair market transaction value for this particular asset. It would tell you what a fair transaction price might be, what that is on a prescriptive basis. It could give you an interval estimate of what the pricing might be, and even tell you what the historical evolution of this uh, particular property would be. And so that's what automated valuation models do, right? And you see them kind of around the world, right? Um, here are some popular ones for various different countries. In the US, you have the Zillow's estimate. Um, in Canada, you have Zolo. Uh, there is property value uh, by CoreLogic in Australia. Zoopla in the UK has one. And in Singapore, we have UrbanZoom that puts out a pretty good automated valuation model as well. So this is really popular and, and you know, it's present in many different countries. So some of the business model around this, you know, so sort, of, sort of quite typically is to use this sort of feature or benefit um, for consumers um, to drive traffic to say property listing websites or property agencies or so on. 
and, and that's one way of, of, of making a business off of automated valuation. Now, obviously, you can also sell these, and, and some of the people that are interested in being able to do this really accurately might be people who are needing to price, trade, or manage portfolios of real estate back debt, right? So CMBS, RMBS portfolios, and so on, or even banks uh, in issuing mortgages or managing mortgage books. But there are also other applications, right? So one of the more, um, you know, relatively recent trends would be for instant buyers, such as Open Door, right? And what they want to do is to be able to make uh, an instantaneous offer to a potential home seller to say, okay, I'll bid X amount of dollars for your home. And, you know, they could sell their house and get that liquidity with a single click. Now, in order to be able to do that, these companies need to be able to automatically value these properties and to do so quite accurately. And so that's one potential, you know, business use case for automated valuation. Um, there are some others as well, right, uh, especially from prop tech companies that are involved uh, in the financing of real estate. You know, there are some instant mortgages, there are models around rent to buy and so on. And these all do uh, require some ability to price uh, property automatically and quite accurately. Um, as an example, Knock is one of these companies offering a home swap facility that bridges the sale and purchase of real estate. Right, so there are a couple of different business models uh, and, and a couple of different business benefits around automated valuation. And this is one key application of data science to real estate. Another uh, very popular application is time series forecasting. Now, um, the methodologies that you might be looking out for, the very traditional methods would be things like ARIMA, vector autoregression or VAR, vector error correction models or VECM. And you know, now there are also ways to use machine learning methods to do these kinds of time series forecasting. One key application that I think a, a lot of people might be quite familiar with is doing macroeconomic forecasting. And so time series such as GDP, inflation, unemployment, things that you might input into some kind of deal analysis or general outlook model, um, those can be forecast using time series, right? And time series methods. And you have some companies such as Oxford Economics and more that do actually provide this service uh, for a fee, right? So that's one opportunity there. Um, and, and you can see how that can be used, you know, if we're trying even to do say some kind of uh, deal analysis and we need to figure out where rents are going, for example, some of these macroeconomic forecasts are really useful. Now, there's also the possibility to directly forecast uh, property markets as well. There's some companies such as Real Estate Foresight um, that you know, ab absolutely do try to provide forecasts of particular uh, real estate markets. Now, actually, this can be quite a challenging area. Forecasting you know, into the future can be quite uh, difficult. It is actually possible with a lot of these um, data science methods to assess some measure of the expected accuracy based especially on historical simulation of the algorithms that are being used. And so that can be one benefit of using these methods as well. There's actually a lot uh, to discuss here and, and that, you know, for time series forecasting can be an entire series of lectures in and of itself. But in this case, I think, um, you know, for, for most of you listening out there, um, the benefit can be quite clear. If you're able to produce statistically robust forecasts based on really large amounts of data and, and many different types of data, and then if these are pretty accurate, this can lead to much better investment decisions and directly higher returns on, on your investment, you know, even in the real estate domain. One other method uh, that is useful for real estate uh, is cluster analysis. Now, cluster analysis is a set of data science techniques that will allow you to identify patterns within a data set. You know, at, at its core, what you're doing is for all of the individual items or elements inside your data set, you're trying to identify groups. And within a group, those objects are much more similar then when you pick objects that are in two different groups. And when you do that, those are gonna be really quite different. Now, if we apply this method to real estate, some of the use cases that we've seen, um, you know, are uh, these two that we'd like to highlight. The first is we could identify groups of properties within a city. Now, the diagram that we're showing on the left comes from an economic paper showing an application of clustering to a real estate data set in Poland. What you can do is to actually look at property characteristics and even sort of pricing and how price performance has varied over time 
and you can build these clusters or groups of properties that are similar to each other. There are a couple of applications of these. Um, now you can kind of understand the segments in the market. That's definitely one. Um, what you can do also is, um, you know, in terms of building a model to predict pricing or something else, you can implement a model tree approach. So you model one cluster separately from another, separately from another. And in some cases that turns out to be a lot more accurate. You know, we think about sort of, you know, uh, an investment uh, use case. Let's say you wanted to acquire a particular piece of real estate. Well, if you happen to have missed that particular deal, if you've done your clustering right, what it might tell you is which other assets in that particular market could also be quite similar and therefore might be interesting for you to now go and look out for. Um, taking another investment uh, use case example, if we think about owning a portfolio of real estate, now, um, by understanding which clusters of properties sort of are, are very similar within the cluster, what you'll be able to say is, okay, is my portfolio really diversified across all of these clusters that potentially are quite different? Or even though nominally these are different properties, are they all grouped within the same cluster? And I actually do have quite a concentrated exposure. So that's another application or, or, or use case for this cluster analysis. Now, another use case, which is quite interesting, is to cluster macroeconomic conditions across time. So if we look at the chart on the right, that is an excerpt from an academic paper. And what they're doing is scoring these macroeconomic conditions at different time periods. And what you're able to do, and, and what you see here, is this leads to a more statistically robust way of producing a property market cycle analysis. You see you know, the bars are the cluster scores, Sort of how positive uh, are the macroeconomic conditions at a particular time and the line in red is the property price index and so this particular example from the academic paper is showing uh, some of the efficacy of, of doing this kind of cluster analysis of um, macroeconomic conditions at different time periods and analyzing you know where are we in the cycle are we at 12 o'clock and topping out or are we at six o'clock and bottoming and things like that so that's another use case um, for data science in real estate. Now, an, an another uh, key example is um, geospatial analysis. Location is a really important factor in real estate and geospatial analysis is the branch of data science that will allow us to study location factors. The screenshot that we have here on the left is actually a proprietary example uh, of an analysis that Property Quants produces. Here, what we're showing is a heat map um, that has actually gathered all of the school information in London, UK. And um, the areas marked in red have a higher location score for schools, right? And that is based on proximity and quality of school space on test score. Now, um, with this location scoring, we can directly study, you know, real estate in, in various places. Um, you know, how well located is it in terms of, you know, is it near uh, a pocket of high quality schools or not? Um, or, you know, you could use it to filter and select properties that match a sort of cutoff according to these scores and so on and so forth. Or this can be part of a larger effort where you have all of these raw data and you're going to convert them into some kind of quantitative score and put these quantitative factors into, say, a pricing or forecasting model to understand you know, how that impacts real estate or what's gonna happen next. So, so location scoring and geospatial analysis is, is one of you know, the key techniques uh, for data science and real estate. In terms of examples of companies to look at in this space, Walk Score is probably a pretty famous example. Um, you know, they look at specifically how walkable a particular property or location is. And they do sell this information to many websites and users as people are trying to evaluate particular uh, locations, neighborhoods or properties. Placer.ai and a couple of other companies do have some, uh, what appears to be mobile phone based data, um, which enables them to understand in aggregate uh, in information about individuals' movements. And this can be really useful um, when we're thinking about say, you know, uh, retail, right? Um, maybe malls, uh, placement of stores, things like that, where to open up. Also useful for property developers and, and so on. Uh, Kumi Analytics is a company that sells satellite image data and a couple of others as well. Um, you know, one of their focuses seems to be um, analyzing light intensity based on these images. 
And so potentially with this kind of geospatial analysis tied into that, you might be able to determine sort of the path of development. And that could be really useful say, for say emerging of frontier markets. Now, some other examples to our knowledge, you know, a retail space based out in the US uses some geospatial analysis um, to advise on optimal locations for retailers, uh, map your property based in Canada, uh, presents a you know, map-based view, helping you consolidate a lot of information for due diligence. Um, and then Geo Intellect uh, is a company that operates out of Russia and provides spatial information of many different kinds, many different layers. And, and if I understand correctly, they may also be able to consult and help understand some of these uh, location factors as well for various types of users. Now, we also want to highlight some of the more recently uh, emerging technologies uh, and use cases for data science and real estate. Um, so one really interesting one is uh, computer vision. So if we look at the example on the left, uh, foxy.ai, and you know, if, if you guys are kind of interested in this, you can actually go and search online and they do have a demonstration that you can play with and put up some photos or properties of your own and, and see what happens. Um, what they're able to do is to use these data science methods for computer vision to come up with a kind of score about property condition. That's actually uh, really valuable. Um, you know, a lot of automated valuation methods currently do not take into account property condition. And so this will sort of open up that possibility um, and will increase the accuracy of these valuation models, especially when applied, you know, at scale. And, you know, imagine if you could use this technology to scan thousands or, or millions of property listings, assess their condition, you know, do some other uh, pricing, and, and then you could identify really, you know, good investments out of a very large pool and find these sort of market beating opportunities. Now, a second area is floor plan analysis. There are a couple of companies sort of working in this space, trying to take the PDF or picture floor plans, um, convert it to the right format, and then uh, produce some kind of analysis around that. In Singapore, um, Attribute is an interesting company to look at uh, in this area. Um, you know, they have a lot of uh, residential floor plans and what you can do with that is they produce a score about, you know, how optimal uh, that particular uh, layout is. And that can be really useful in decision making uh, for people looking for residential properties. Now, this is also another factor that is typically uh, currently overlooked in automated valuation models. So as we move forward and are eventually able to use this at scale, this could really improve automated valuation. Another sort of line in the floor plan analysis um, sort of uh, trend is for people trying to figure out, you know, optimal usage and layouts of offices and so on. Um, you know, sometimes they analyze even sort of the facing and sunlight and, and how that impacts sort of people's movement and things like that. Sort of a third emerging technology is in chatbots, right? And a recent application of this that we've seen is in facilities management. So FacilityBot is a company uh, based out of Singapore. And uh, what they do is to actually integrate into WhatsApp, WeChat and more. And you know, tenants or, or users could key in and, and ask uh, for whatever questions or, or requests that they have into those existing sort of chat software. And the bot will reply and this can sort of streamline the amount of work and reduce costs significantly. Now chatbots are based on a number of different types of techniques, you know, including natural language processing, and in some cases, deep learning. So this is an interesting emerging use case for data science and real estate. Speaking of natural language processing, um, you know, one interesting example we've seen is also in property listing websites. So you can try this out. Um, there is a listing website called mogul.sg. And what you're able to do is really just key in in free text, the way that you describe a property to another human being. You know, we're looking for near a train with a balcony on a high floor um, near a particular school and you just put in the name. And, you know, using these natural language processing methods, that's able to be converted into a particular set of search parameters or filter. And the user will then get a very specific set of relevant property listing results. And so that's a really uh, interesting application of data science real estate. So we've talked a lot about how, you know, data science can concretely be used for real estate. And we've noted early on that there's a little bit of a skills gap. This kind of data science knowledge isn't as widespread in the industry as it could be. So one of the questions that we'd like to answer is where, you know, you 
or maybe employees in your company can learn these methods. The number of options that you have, right? You could take a general course in data science. Um, general Assembly does offer them, um, you know, as well as some other companies, or there are Coursera courses that you could take. Um, you know, going to the other extreme, you could take a formal course of study at a university in, in data science and machine learning. But even then, these courses are actually quite broad and they don't cover the domain specific methods needed for real estate. Property Coins does offer a master's level in-depth hands-on course over 11 weeks. And in that, we teach the domain specific applications of data science to real estate. It's a modular course. And in the course, we accommodate participants without pre-existing knowledge of programming or data science. And we also are able to, you know, by having the right modules, accommodate those who might know a little bit of Python, Pandas, Scikit-Learn and so on. The course covers a great number of the techniques that we talked about today. And if you'd like to find out more, do visit our website at propertycons.com slash training, or you can email me and my email will be on the next screen. Alternatively, you know, um, we do also offer a two a half day non-technical seminar in which we go into significant depth on the applications of data science to real estate. That two day seminar, which you can find out more about on propertycons.com slash seminar, is meant for senior executives at real estate companies or prop tech venture capitalists. We discuss the business opportunities uh, around data science for real estate in more depth. We demystify some of these data science concepts in, in, in a reasonable amount of detail. Prop tech investors will be able to more successfully due diligence uh, companies they're thinking of investing in by having an understanding of what are the techniques they're actually employing? You know, what are some of the pitfalls and dangers? What does it actually do? What's hard and what's easy and so on. Senior executives at real estate companies will be able or empowered to know you know, what's actually needed to bring a data science or digital transformation to their firms and know what to ask for from technical staff or consultants uh, that they might hire um, and understand right, when there are these discussions, you know, um, what, what these guys mean when they're talking about specific data science methods or approaches to data analysis or research. So again, you know, uh, feel free to visit our website to find out more. If you do have any questions, um, you know, uh, feel free to type that into the chat. Um, and I'm happy to answer any, any questions you might have. And uh, if not, uh, my email is here, uh, nelson at propertyclones.com. Do please uh, feel free to connect, um, you know, either by emailing me or, or through the uh, platform here. And I'm happy to, you know, help you in any way that we can or answer any questions about this presentation or anything else that we're working on. Great, so I don't see any questions right now. Um, and so thanks so much for attending. Do please feel free to send me a message and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.